Hello, this is Ben Baxter with Accent Software. Today I'm going to walk you through the template functionality within the Dynamics NAV product. This functionality is used in conjunction with job costing and jobs to make the process of setting up a new job or a new sub job very easy. In fact, you can build out almost 90% of your job, depending on your industry, of course, to account for the task structure, the activities that are going to happen in order to fulfill a type of job that you do. You can include material, you can include time, you can include subcontractors, and all the different cost factors that may go into your job. Now, as I said, it is dependent on your industry. So if you're in an industry that it is very, very customized, every job is absolutely unique and you cannot predefine the activities, then you have a limited task structure that you can really define. Now, we find that even in a very customized, one-off type situation, you still have a similar workflow that you work through for your process or your jobs. So we still encourage you to build at least some kind of template and I'm going to walk you through some examples of that. Today I'm going to be using the web client which is one of the user interfaces available in the Dynamics NAV 2016, 2017, I believe even back to 2015 version of the product. Now if you're new to NAV then you just understand that this is one of the user interfaces available. In some of my other videos I'm going to emphasize the tablet client and the full Windows client. But the functionality across each of these are very very similar. It's just a user interface preference so that's what we're going to use today. Today. In my environment, what I'm going to do to get to the templates, I'm going to show you the resource templates. You can also set up a template for an item type job. The only difference between the two, resource is a service type business where even if I'm building a very large conveyor system, as long as it's not serialized or lot tracked or something like that, then I can use a resource. If I'm in an environment where I'm creating pieces or I'm creating serialized or lot number tracked items, then I would use an item template. But the capability between the two is identical. The only difference is when I create the item, I have a production step at the end. But they are both fully capable within my system. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use resources for this example. And I'm going to click on my job project services. These are my templates for future work. So I again, I do not have to use a template. I have another video that shows estimating and how you can create estimates for jobs and I use a template in that so you'll actually see it in action. But I just want to walk through how they're set up today. So I'm going to show you some uh, different examples. This one is for a repair type job. I have an indicator of six, meaning it's a fairly simple task structure. So in this one, tear down, clean, inspection, repair, assembly, test run, those are the six steps that every time I do a repair type work for a client, regardless of whether it's on a huge gas turbine engine or an electrical motor or something like that, these are the steps that I follow regardless of what it is. And then I can adjust this once I'm on the individual client job. But in this case, this is a template. It's generic. It works for every type of client we work with when we do a repair type job. And I can adjust this very simply by simply clicking on the next line, adding a task number that is sequential, and then giving a description of what it is. So in this case, we'll do delivery and installation. Okay. So if we're returning the, the repair of whatever it is back, and we do part of the installation, then I simply add that task. And then I'm going to come over and I'm going to select from my list a resource, if I want to, to define who's going to do it. So we'll just pick Amy and we'll say that it takes her 50 hours to uh, do the delivery and installation. That's it. The last thing is to auto create the task planning lines, which is simply going to take Amy and apply her resource to this job. So you can see the one planning line was inserted and that's it. I've updated that template. Every time I create a new job for this type of work, it's going to now have the delivery and installation on it. Now maybe I've decided that one of these tasks is unnecessary. It's an activity that we no longer do. It's very simple to come in, select it and say delete line. And that's it. 
Okay, I've taken it off, it's gone, it's out of the system, and it wouldn't matter even if it was one of these upper ones and I remove it, it just leaves a little gap in my task number system, but it doesn't matter because it's still sequential even though there's a gap. So it doesn't matter which way I do it. The important part is, is that it needs to be a permanent decision because that template is now using that structure for every job that I select with that template. Now, of course, I can go back and always update it so it's not permanent forever, but it is a permanent change in that every new job that I create with it will then use that structure. Now, I did add a resource to it. Understand I'm not adding their cost to the template. The template has zero cost whatsoever. When I create the job using the template, that's when it's grabbing the most current cost for my resources, for my machines that I use, for the material that I have on my template, all of those are getting the most current cost at the time that the job is created. Now we're gonna go ahead and close this one up. We'll take a look at a more complex job so you can see a different structure to it. So the, the other one just had six simple tasks. This one has nested task groups. So I have the begin project, so a totaling start, a design phase and then the activities that happen within my design. Then the design ends and I total those up so that I can see what is my total estimate for just the design phase. And then I have some just generic activities that happen between the design phase and the end of the job, which would be project management time, any kind of documentation and planning. And then I get into my fabrication. So again, another begin total. Then I have a structure and a framing within the structure within fabrication. So you can nest groups within groups within groups. Now this doesn't make sense if my job takes two weeks. I'm not ever going to have enough time for my people to record their time to all of these different activities if my job is a very quick job. Where we see these types of structures come into play is where a job takes a year two years, three years, sometimes three months, six months, nine months, something like that. But you have to justify the time taken to record the time against this type of structure versus just having a person capture their time to fabrication and not into the platform build and then support piles and paneling. You, you have to be able to justify it and have someone researching it. We always encourage people, if you don't have anyone doing the analysis, there's no point capturing the estimate and the time because you're adding cost to the project where no one's actually going to look at it. Make sure that you build your template to match your current business culture. As your culture changes, as you get better and better with the way you report, the way you analyze your jobs, that's where you change your template. That's where you get into the finer point detail so that you can really, really analyze and find out where are we profitable? Where can we improve? How can we get better? How can we be more competitive and win more business? So it's all about how you structure it to your business culture and you grow with the system. So as you get better with tracking, as you see all the great functionality and tools inside the ERP program, that's where you start making it better and start making yourself better. So those are a look of some of the, the different structures that I can build into my templates for a, a resource in this case, but exactly the same functionality. I have my tasks and then within my tasks, I can have the planning lines. So the actual person or multiple items or people that are going to be associated with that individual activity. But that's the template. Again, the template is nothing other than a template. When I create a new job, I'm selecting one of these if I choose to, and that will populate my job. The job is then tailored, as you'll see in my other estimating video, tailored to the customer's specifications. You use this when you're estimating a large project. If you have a $12 million RFP, you want to be able to drop a template in and then start working through the RFP as quickly as you can. If you're starting it from scratch, you're going to be much slower than your competition. So the templates are a way to speed up 
the estimation process so that you can win more business. So hopefully that makes sense to you. When I create jobs, as you'll see in my other estimating video, I am selecting one of my templates to start that job. So I appreciate the time. If this is good content for you, please share it with your colleagues, share it with your business partners, and like and subscribe our videos so that we know that you've gotten good information out of us and, and good feedback. We really appreciate that. So with that, I'll, I'll let you go. Have a good day. Make sure you check out our other videos, and we'll talk to you soon.